I'm gonna show you the 10 best PS4 games worth playing on the PlayStation 5. And if you've already played these games on the PS4, then expect to see a massive increase when played again on Sony's next-gen console. By the way, all footage was taken straight from my PlayStation 5. Enjoy. Number 10. Ratchet and Clank. Now, for those who don't know, this is actually a remake of the first game in the series back in 2002. I, for some reason, thought it was a remake of Tools of Destruction. You know, the one that was released on the PlayStation 3? I guess it's not so far-fetched to assume that. The two games do share a lot of similarities. Toy Story quality graphics, great sound design, and just overall high production quality. There is, however, one differentiating factor. Just recently, Ratchet & Clank was given a 60 FPS upgrade available only on the PlayStation 5, intended to give gamers a slight taste of what the next game in the series will offer. Gameplay is now smoother than ever. The visuals look absolutely beautiful. There's just no other way to describe it. Draw distance go on as far as the eye can see, and there's practically a million particle effects going on at once. This right here feels almost like a PS5 remaster. It's a great game to sit down and play with the rest of the family or even just by yourself it's bright it's colorful and it's funny sort of like those disney pixar movies number nine the evil within two you know what i hate about this game I always feel like something's gonna jump out at me. This is definitely one of those games where I would need to have someone sitting next to me in order to play. If you're familiar with the first one, then you'll feel right at home with the second. The Evil Within 2 still retains the creepy vibe you come to know and love from the original. There are, however, a few quality of life changes you'll notice off the bat. For one, the game makes use of the entire screen this time around. If you remember back when the original came out, the game was played in a letterbox mode with black bars at the top and bottom of the screen. There was a patch later down the road that allowed you to turn it off by I think by then I had already finished the game. It was okay at first, but got really annoying the further I got into the game, especially when things started getting really claustrophobic. I'm glad the sequel got rid of that feature from the start. It was supposed to make things look more cinematic. Really? I don't understand how seeing less of the screen makes things more cinematic. Am I missing something? Another thing you'll notice is that controlling your character feels a lot smoother. He doesn't feel like a bumbling idiot like he did in the first game. And of course, the best feature of all, the ability to play at an unlocked frame rate. Thanks to the power of the PlayStation 5, you can now enjoy The Evil Within 2 at a locked 60 FPS. Survival horror never looked this good. That is, unless you played Resident Evil 2 Remake. Number 8. Nino Kuni Remastered. Being a huge fan of Studio Ghibli, I could not wait to get my hands on this game. Having missed it when it was first released on the PlayStation 3, I felt like now was a perfect time to finally try out Nino Kuni. And after a few hours of play, I can confidently say it does not disappoint. Developed by Level 5 in collaboration with Studio Ghibli, Nino Kuni feels like you're watching an animated movie. The way the game transitions from in-game cutscene to full motion animation is just seamless. There was one point where I forgot I was playing a video game. I had no prior knowledge of this game going in, so I didn't know what to expect. It's an endearing and heartwarming story that has all the earmarks of a Studio Ghibli film. The characters are lovable and the locations are magical. The music is also wonderfully composed. Gameplay isn't anything too crazy either. It's your traditional real-time JRPG at work here. Nino Kuni Remastered ran great on the PlayStation 4, but on the PlayStation 5, you're guaranteed a lock 60 FPS. If you're a fan of JRPGs and Studio Ghibli films, then look no further than Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered. Number 7. God of War. How many times do I have to mention this game before you guys play it? I think this might be the third time I've talked about God of War in my videos. Can you guys tell how much I like this game? This was originally one of those PS4 games you had to play without installing the latest patch in order to get the next gen experience. That is until patch version 1.35. Now you can play with the latest update at full 4K 60fps. God of War truly is a spectacle to behold. Regardless of how you feel about the new direction and gameplay, you can't deny its visual presentation. This is one beautiful looking game. I'm not sure what else to say about God of War other than what's already been said. In my opinion, it's deserving of all the awards it's gotten so far. Yes, it's different from the previous games in the series, but isn't that the entire point? I mean, if I wanted to play something that was similar to the original God of War games, then you know what I'd do? I'd play the original God of War games. This is a bold step for Sony's flagship title, and I couldn't be happier with the new approach they're taking. Listen, everything is gonna be okay. Embrace it. The game is good. Number 6. Gran Turismo Sport 
also known as Sony's License to Print Money. The game ran pretty well on previous consoles, so you won't see much of an improvement going over to the PlayStation 5. PS4 and PS4 Pro were able to hit 60 FPS with very few drops. What PS5 does is takes what essentially is an amazing game and pretty much perfects it. Frame rate now is a locked 60 FPS. Upon release, Gran Turismo Sport received a lot of criticism for its deviation from past games in the series. There were a lot less cars to choose from and a greater emphasis on competitive online racing. But through it all, many gamers finally came to the conclusion that Sport might be the most enjoyable game in the series since Gran Turismo 4. Whether you agree with that or not is debatable, but it's clear that Gran Turismo Sport is indeed the game for car lovers. It also happens to be the prettiest Gran Turismo as well. With the resolution of 1800 through checkerboard rendering running at a locked 60 FPS with HDR enabled, it's hard not to gush about how pretty GT Sport looks. Gran Turismo 7 might be a ways off, so if you don't feel like waiting, give Sport a try in the meantime. Number 5. Days Gone now, here's an example of how important frame rate can make to a game. Definitely the game changer in this generation. There is, however, one drawback to playing in 60 FPS. Once you experience it, you can't go back. In terms of visual feature sets and resolution, however, the PS4 Pro and PS5 are pretty much identical. If you're expecting a huge graphical upgrade by playing on Sony's newer machine, then you're in for a big disappointment, as the game doesn't appear to have any significantly improved textures or visual fidelity on the PS5. The main reason to play Days Gone on PlayStation 5 comes down to performance through the enhanced FPS. PS4 Pro targets the game at 30 FPS with rare drops here and there, depending on what's happening on the screen. The PS5, however, comes in at a target 6. There's a few single frame drops when you encounter the hordes, but for the most part maintains the coveted 60 FPS. A great game to show off the power of the PS5, and it also doesn't hurt that it's included in the PlayStation Plus collection as well. Number 4 no Man's Sky. Now, this game should get an award just for the amount of support it's gotten from the developers. Kudos to Hello Games for standing by their game. Many titles would have been left to die after an abysmal launch, but that's not the case here. The game wasn't terrible when it was released, but given the promises made by the developers, I can see why fans would be disappointed. Now, after numerous patches, No Man's Sky is finally realized. I just wish we could have gotten it on day one instead of having to wait years later. With the most recent patch, we can now have a next-gen version of No Man's Sky. Coming in at 1800p at a target 60 FPS, this is as good as it's gonna get. Just make sure you download the PS5 patch. Improved textures, better draw distance, and faster loading is what this is all about, guys. If you're still holding off on this game, then now's the time to finally jump in. Number 3. Doom. At first glance, you might not see a difference playing this on the PS5. You might actually even think you were playing on the PS4 even. Boy, could you be any more wrong. Although both the PS4 Pro and PS5 can pump out similar pixel resolution, performance takes the lead on Sony's newer machine. PlayStation 5 runs the game at locked 60 FPS. There's not a single drop when enemies crowd the screen or when an explosion is going off. I remember countless videos on YouTube where they would always compare the frame rate from previous patches and why the game ran worse than it used to. And to be honest, Honest, I was so sick of them. Now I have the peace of mind that Doom is finally locked at 60 FPS. No more frame rate charts analyzing where certain stress points are and all that crap. My one and only complaint is that the resolution wasn't bumped up to a full 2160p. The PS5 is clearly powerful enough to do that, and it's a shame there isn't a patch to allow it. Number 2. Resident Evil 7. I gotta be honest, I held off on playing this game for the longest time. One reason being that it was in first person. To me, Resident Evil was always a game that was meant to be played in third person. I just can't see anything when I'm in first person. Especially when the game is so dark to begin with. Most of the time, I'm basically just bumping into walls and stuff. Second reason, which I'm rather ashamed to admit, is that I was too scared to play this game. Since it's in first person, every time I turn a corner, I always feel like something is about to jump out at me. With the recent release of Resident Evil Village, I'd figured it was about time to finally try out RE7. It started off okay. There wasn't anything special about it. Quite frankly, it felt a little mediocre. That is until I found Mia. Okay, spoiler alert. So if you haven't played this game yet, then you might want to turn away. The scene where Mia is coming up the steps all possessed and starts stabbing you with a knife is when I realized how awesome the game was. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. It's just so different from what I've come to expect from a Resident Evil game. It felt more like, I don't know, like just 
really creepy with a little bit of that Japanese horror element. Capcom reinvented themselves when they made RE4 and for RE7, I felt like they did the same thing. If you held off on this game because of similar reasons, then I urge you to give it a try. If you're scared, then be a man and suck it up. If you get nauseous playing in first person, then there's an option where you can turn off the camera shake, which helps tremendously. Trust me. I didn't get dizzy at all playing this, although you might want to bump up the brightness just a tad more than what it's recommended. There's a demo on the PSN store, which I don't think does this game justice at all. However, if you're a PlayStation Plus member, you get the game for free since it's part of the PS Plus collection. So there's absolutely no reason left not to play this game. Go for it. Number 1. Saikido Shadows Die Twice from Software is known for their brutally difficult games, and Psychido is no exception. There are instances where you think you have everything under control, only to die a few seconds later. With that being said, I will admit, Psychido is one of the easier games made by the Japanese developer. It's challenging, no doubt, but I do feel I have somewhat of a fighting chance this time around. Compared to the Soul series, Psychido moves along at a quicker pace. There's less role-playing elements and more emphasis on action-adventure. Heck, there's even more platforming. The story is also better in my opinion, or at least more attention is paid to it. If I had to make a direct comparison, I would say Psychodo is closer to Ninja Gaiden than anything else. I actually prefer that as I'm a huge Ninja Gaiden fan. There's a lot of similarities you can draw from the two games. The game is fast and there's always a constant need to be moving. What I really think Psychodo does better, however, is its enemy design. They're just really strange and outlandish looking. For example, I would never expect a giant rooster to come at me like that. There's a great blur effect you get when performing an instant kill, and environments have that mystical Japanese look. When played on the PlayStation 5, not only do you get dynamic 4K resolution, but at a locked 60 FPS as well. If you like action adventure, this is the game to get. Highly recommended. Now, if you want to see more PS4 games that look and play great on the PlayStation 5, then click the links on the screen or the ones that are pinned down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.